Hello Kerbalots and welcome to Back to the Kerbal Future. Frosty Kerman has to go back to the future now, he has to go back to the past because we're going to be absorbing some of the builds that I or Vader have been making in the past. Well before I started YouTube and well not too far after I got the game itself. So, okay so the first thing I built was this thing. Other than getting into orbit and everything, I decided to make a larger rocket and I used all these small boosters to try to get this into orbit, an orange tank for some reason, I thought it'd be something neat. I'm not sure entirely what I was thinking, I called it the X rocket, I think it's because uh, it kills the Kerbal. <laughs> However, one thing I do like about it though, is after all the destruction, all the rockets go everywhere. I'm not sure if this rocket would actually take off if I played it in the original version and I think I'll get into that. At the end of the video I think what we'll do is we'll play the old version, show you how to get something into orbit, show you the difference in the game that you know had evolved to this. Okay this I was really proud of at the time, I think it was in 0.22 or perhaps after that, I was developing a mission that would go to Dunar and land and return the Kerbals. It's a four stage, basically you'd have a rover, you'd have the lander, you'd have the base itself. Uh, you'd, yeah, the lander would be able to return the craft to the orbiting craft, which then would return the Kerbals back to Kerbin. It was all planned out, I had all Delta V required, however, because things changed in the game, it uh, it'll no longer work. Perhaps I could engineer again to make it work. You can see this stage, this is the lander itself. This would sort of land on Duner, not sort of, it would land on Duner. All the Kerbals we could get into it and return back to the orbiting craft. It had so many parachutes just to make sure it would land softly and not have to use the rockets itself. And this build here is the actual transfer stage. This is also the part that returned the Kerbals back safely. As you can see, all the top parts, there are no aerodynamics, there's no shell for the uh, fairing for the payload or anything like that. That's because aerodynamics didn't work the same way. There's no way that you could flip your rocket out. You could actually turn it to 90 degrees and it would not flip out because of aerodynamics in this, in version 0.21. I am actually playing this in 1.42 or whichever version it is, 1.43. All the crafts that will load up in the game. Unfortunately, the rover itself for the Duna mission it didn't work. Uh, I think there must be some mods or some parts that no longer work in the current version. And also, you may note that there's a tank just above the orange tank. That's because in the original versions of the game, for some reason, the orange tank would explode, and the only way to stop that was to put an orange tank in between it. Oh, and by the way, this was the base, and obviously it flipped out because the aerodynamics. So this craft right here was part of the first series that I'd done on YouTube. It was, I can't remember what it was called, Kerbal Indian Odyssey or something like that. But basically it was supposed to be a story narrative where the Kerbals be exploring, there'd be stories about the Kerbals, the Kerbals had their own characters, there'd be sort of like cutscenes as well. However, I think I failed at that and also this was when science mode was added to the game so it, that's why I was limited by the past that I could choose for this build. But I thought, you know, this is when my YouTube adventures began. But when my YouTube adventures finally took off, it was because of the tutorials that I made, building a space station, but this was my favourite one, redirecting an asteroid. And that tutorial then went on to building an asteroid base tutorial, which was basically rendezvousing the asteroid with several things like thrusters, um, solar panels like we have here, and basically this was a probe that you could be able to dock to the to the individual solar panels arrays and then attach them sideways on which I don't think I showed you in this in this video but I think you get the point basically you dock with it and dock with it and then reattach it although I didn't expect people to follow this more advanced way of sort of like building a base it did show the basics of rendezvous and attaching things to an asteroid so that you could yourself enjoy your own asteroid base Oh, and these things, which I absolutely love. Basically, they have a lot of um, veneer thrusters, and they'd act like RCS. You attach them to the asteroid so that you can move the asteroid and orientate it in the way you want. And I decided to have some fun to see if I could impact in one of the rockets. It worked. 
Kessler syndrome has been initiated. I have no idea whatsoever what was going through my head when I was building this rocket and others like it. For some reason, I decided at some point that strats were no longer needed. Perhaps it was because I had a mod on that save and I didn't realise it when I was loading them into the modern game. This is called the Moho Test 1. I think it was sort of a test and to see that I can get to Moho. I think I was going to do a tutorial at some point. I'm not sure. But anyway, let's hyper edit this into space and I can show you what this was. Basically, it was a lander and a return stage which would get to Moho. And obviously, going to Moho is not the easiest because it is a small planet close to the sun, which was the analog Mercury. Probably the third most proud build that I'm proud of is, other than space stations and asteroid bases, is my space shuttle. Not this one. This was sort of like the early version, which was trying to show you that the thrust offset has to be made so that you can center all the thrust at the center of mass of the rocket itself. Basically, the shuttle, when it's going into orbit, is basically a rocket with a few wings. The wings are meant to help it glide down to a safe landing. Basically, the three challenges of a Kerbal Near is to 1. Launch into orbit, that's the first challenge, 2. Land on the Man, or any of the moons, and 3. Rendezvous and dock with something to start building a space station, or something like that. And then 4. Build a space shuttle. Yes, I said 4, because uh, you don't have to actually make a space shuttle. In fact, space planes are much harder than rockets, which is probably why I've stuck with rockets mostly. Anyway, let's go back in time. This is version 0.21, as you can see in the right hand corner, 0.211.1. And if I show you my saves, as you get Kerbal Space Program, which was my stay uh, tests, Snow Sandbox, your test one, YouTube test one, YouTube test flights, you can see I was not sure of how to do Kerbal Space Program. Or YouTube basically, I was more ashamed of what I was building at the time. But as you can see, the Kerbal Space Center is very basic. You didn't have R&D, didn't have half the stuff you needed. And if I show you the shuttle cockpit, you can see that things weren't the same. Even the menu system, the building system was slightly different in the game. But it was fun. It meant that uh, everything was more comical, more... Uh, easier and you could do things that you could never think of which we, we're already doing anyway let's show you a launch okay so we're launching this into space you can see that this rocket is not aerodynamic whatsoever because of the flat tops of the rockets it aerodynamics was not the same aerodynamics was just a drag on the rocket depending on how deep the, in the atmosphere you were so you could go in any direction you just have the drag the slowing down rate of your rocket which is why we needed the extra thrust to get into orbit. The problem with this is that the aerodynamic forces aren't realistic. However, it did make the game a lot easier to get into orbit. For basically, here we are at 10 kilometers. You get through the thickest part of the atmosphere, then you go 45 degrees towards the west, and then you'd burn until your periapsis or apolapsis is 100 kilometers up into space. Then you wait until you get into to 100 kilometers, then you burn to get yourself into orbit. I think I decided to start my burn a bit late by here, and also I decided to stage earlier, <laughs> not using the full st lower stage to get myself into orbit. And that made me dip down into the atmosphere a bit, but hey, I'm just showing you that this was so easy that, well, basically, anybody could do it. But that is not the point of why I'm showing you it. I'm showing you that Kerbal Space Program has evolved to be a much more encompassing game. It's much more realistic, but still being easy enough that people can get a handle on it and enjoyment. Though I miss the early days where you know the adventure began for me, it still can begin for you guys. And oh yes, Kelgan Kerman is not happy. He's in the atmosphere. And he has to get back on the ship before he loses his com command capsule. But as I said, aerodynamics didn't work the same way as it did in the newer versions of the game. And lastly, this brings me onto this build, which I call the Spider Rover, even though it's only got six wheels. 
However, I enjoyed the way that this thing was built. Basically, it would have its launch system. That launch system would get partly on its way to... Where did I send this to? Now I remember, this rover was going to Elo. It was supposed to be a project, I think it was when I was adding Kerbals, your names, I can't remember. But I was using these advanced engines, which are probably unrealistic to get it back and forth to the Elo. It did have enough Delta V to return. I don't think the rover itself had enough thrust or Delta V to get back into orbit though, which was the problem. I was eventually going to send a rescue mission, but you know, as things go, the game gets updated, you decide let's start over again. But I was proud of this build because it's highly functional. Even though I use mods like KW Rocketry, Advanced Rocketry, that, which is probably unrealistic because the thrust to weight ratio and the efficiency of the engines were too high. But I was really proud of that build otherwise. And yes, the rover itself, the spider rover. In fact, this inspired me because it was quite stable to build a proper spider rover, which I don't think I showed here, but is available video. And the spider rover even worked on the oceans as long as you used jet engines. But alas, it's time to go back to the future. The Kerbals of this century have worked out a way using jet engines and solid rocket boosters to get this up to speed. And yes, I forgot how this ballistic missile works. And I can't remember if I built this or if I downloaded this as a craft that someone else built or copied someone's build. This, <laughs> I don't know, it was quite fun though just to use. I think I was deciding to do a war or something at some point. Anyway, I am more beta. Trust me, I'm a time engineer.